Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. George H.W. Bush, the 41st president of the United States, died in Houston Friday night at the age of 94. His body will lie in state in the Capitol Rotunda from tonight until Wednesday. He'll be buried later this week in Houston, after two memorial services in Washington, D.C. and Houston. Bush was elected president in 1988, becoming the first and only former CIA director to lead the country. From 1981 to 89, he served as Ronald Reagan's vice president. At his inauguration in 1989, Bush vowed to build a kinder, gentler nation. But as president, he oversaw two wars. Bush invaded Panama in order to arrest former CIA asset Manuel Noriega. An estimated 3,000 people died in the attack. A year later, Bush launched the Gulf War after Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. The U.S. attack devastated the Iraqi civilian infrastructure and killed an unknown number of Iraqi civilians. Twelve years later, his son, President George W. Bush, would attack Iraq again. On the domestic front, Bush Sr. is remembered by many in the LGBT community for his lack of action in the 1990s as the HIV-AIDS crisis raged on. Bush refused to address and fund programs around HIV-AIDS, education and prevention, as well as drug treatment. He also perpetuated Reagan's so-called war on drugs, which disproportionately criminalized black Americans, saying, we need more prisons, more jails, more courts, more prosecutors, unquote. More recently, Bush was accused of groping multiple women during photo opportunities. We'll have more on the life of George H.W. Bush after headlines. In Mexico, the new president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, was sworn in Saturday. Tens of thousands gathered in Mexico City's century Zocalo Square to celebrate the first leftist president in decades. In his inaugural speech, AMLO addressed security and vowed to end corruption and impunity. With the inefficiencies of police bodies and the great increase in homicides, robberies, kidnappings, femicides and other crimes, I'm calling on Congress to urgently approve a constitutional reform that allows us to integrate the military police, marine police and the federal police for a National Guard to organize the functions of public security in a manner that respects human rights. President López Obrador announced he would call for a referendum in two years so that citizens could decide if he should remain in power for the rest of his term. On his first day in office, AMLO signed an agreement with the leaders of Honduras, Guatemala and El Salvador for regional development programs aimed at curbing migration to the United States. At the G20 summit in Argentina, President Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping have agreed to a truce in the ongoing trade war between the two countries. Trump will reportedly temporarily halt his plan to raise the current U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods from 10 to 25 percent, while China has agreed to increase its purchase of agricultural and industrial products from the U.S., as well as halt the export of fentanyl, a synthetic opioid, to the U.S. In more trade news, Trump announced he would cancel NAFTA as he pushes to pass the new U.S.-Mexico Canada agreement. The three North American countries signed the deal at the G20 summit, but it must still be ratified by their respective governments. In France, over 100,000 people took to the streets across the country Saturday, an ongoing dispute over mounting fuel prices. More than 400 people were arrested, 260 were injured in the third weekend of demonstrations since the Yellow Vest protest began. Three people have died in traffic-related accidents since the start of the protest. Demonstrators are calling out the disconnect between President Macron environmental initiatives used to justify the fuel tax hikes and the financial realities of many people in France. Newly released WhatsApp messages between slain Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi and another Saudi exile reveal Khashoggi's growing mistrust of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, as well as the pair's plans to launch an online campaign to counter the Saudi regime's human rights abuses. In one message, Khashoggi wrote, quote, Arrests are unjustified and do not serve him, logic says, but tyranny has no logic, but he loves force oppression and needs to show them off. He's like a beast Pac-Man. The more victims he eats the more he wants, Khashoggi wrote. The Montreal-based Saudi activist Omar Abdulaziz has filed a lawsuit against Israeli company NSO Group, which, he says, was hired by the Saudis to hack the pair's 400 messages on the social networking app. This comes as The Wall Street Journal is reporting. The CIA has evidence that the crown prince sent 11 messages to close advisor Saud al-Qahtani around the time of Khashoggi's murder. Al-Qahtani is believed to have overseen Khashoggi 
Khashoggi's murder at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Last month, the CIA concluded with high confidence that the crown prince was directly responsible for ordering the killing. Last week, the White House would not allow Gina Haspel, the head of the CIA, to testify before the Senate. In Poland, the U.N. climate summit opened this weekend in Katowice, Poland, with leaders calling for swift global action. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres said climate change is a matter of life and death for many nations, and that the worst polluters are not doing enough to meet the goals of the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. This came just one day after Trump stood as the sole leader at the G20 summit, who did not sign on to the statement reaffirming support for the Paris Agreement. Last year, Trump announced the U.S. is with withdrawal from the international agreement. In Texas, the white police officer who shot and killed a 26-year-old black Dallas man in his own apartment has been indicted for murder. The officer, Amber Geiger, entered Botham Jean's apartment, where she shot and killed him on September 6th. <clears throat> Geiger claimed she thought she was entering her own apartment in the apartment complex. She was initially charged with manslaughter, but a grand jury decided to pursue the murder charge after hearing testimonies in the case. In Wisconsin, Republican state lawmakers are attempting to push through a series of bills before the newly elected Democratic governor and attorney general take office next month. The bills are scheduled to go through a hearing today and would restrict the early voting period, moving up the 2020 presidential primary election to help a far-right justice remain on the state Supreme Court, blocking commenting Governor uh, Tony Evers from withdrawing Wisconsin from a lawsuit against the Affordable Care Act and allow the legislature to sidestep incoming de Democratic Attorney General Josh Call in certain legal battles. Two women have accused the renowned astrophysicist and television host Neil deGrasse Tyson of sexual misconduct, prompting his employers, the Museum of Natural History, as well as Fox Broadcasting and National Geographic, which air his popular series Cosmos, to investigate the claims. One woman, a fellow astrophysicist, alleges DeGrasse Tyson groped her, while another, DeGrasse Tyson's former assistant, described inappropriate comments and unwanted physical contact. Meanwhile, the story of a third woman who's accused DeGrasse Tyson of rape for years is getting renewed attention, despite it being largely ignored till now. Chia Ahmet, who is African-American, has alleged DeGrasse Tyson raped her while they attended University of Texas. She spoke publicly about the accusation multiple times, reportedly as early as 2010. Politico is reporting Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen has requested other cabinet departments deploy civilian law enforcement officers to the U.S.-Mexico border as early as this week. President Trump sent some 6,000 troops down to the border last month. But unlike military forces, law enforcement officers would not face restrictions of the Posse Comitatus Act, which prevents military personnel from engaging in certain civilian law enforcement duties. <clears throat> On Friday, students from the City University of New York rallied outside the offices of the CUNY board chair, Bill Thompson, to protest his support of Amazon's new New York City headquarters. We are demanding that CUNY Board of Trustees Chair Thompson rescind his op-ed in the Daily News endorsing this Amazon deal. We also call on Cuomo de Blasio. Thompson and everyone involved in this scheme to invest this money instead in CUNY, where we have crumbling buildings, where we have students that cannot afford to go to college, where undocumented students are not properly protected. Do we really want a New York that only works for wealthy, elite, corrupt politicians and CEOs? And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn